Okay, after all that prep, we finally got some tile on. Uh, in fact, I got probably half the job done now. Um, I'm left with just uh, these two walls here and uh, this extension of this wall around my uh, vanity. And uh, let's talk about <clears throat> what got me here and, and let's talk about my process. It might be similar than some of the processes that you see uh, other guys do or, or maybe a little bit different. Uh, I think I started out in a video saying that I was going to put 2x2 two two marble. This is actually 2x2 two two travertine down here. Uh, that was my mistake. Uh, the curb is made up of uh, travertine pieces as well. I honed the edges so I wouldn't have to deal with any bonos. Uh, I used polishing compound and started with uh, 400 grit sandpaper and then down to uh, a polishing um, surface to get those honed edges to make it nice and smooth. Create my own bonos. That's what's uh, so nice about stone. Um, we got uh, sanded ground in between those joints at 3 16 A lot of people say, oh, you're supposed to use non-sanded ground. I did here on the floor, uh, and I did here on that floor, but here uh, with these, I use, it a sand, I use a sanded ground on a curb. It's not a big deal. Don't freak out. Uh, I'm not going to freak out. Uh, this is my bathroom. I can do what I want. Uh, even in a, in, with a customer, I'd probably do the same thing. Wouldn't, wouldn't use sanded ground on a big field area where there's stone uh, on a large wall? Because obviously you can't scratch, but no one's going to notice any scratches down there. I was really careful when I put that grout in there, so I'm not worrying about it. I like the grout joints uh, with these bigger stones. Now, the, these three pieces, or nine pieces, because I got three on the other side, three on the front, three on the top, came from a Versailles pattern. So that those nine pieces came from two pieces of a 16 by 24 inch um, tile. Okay, two pieces. Now, a Versailles pattern is made up by 16 by 24, 16 by 16, 8 by 16, 8 by 8, uh, and 16 by 16, I think I said that. Um, I'm going to get into Versailles patterns later and design and all that stuff. Um, uh, I like it a lot. I've done a couple of Versailles pattern uh, showers that turn out really nice. But uh, notice how the match, uh, the match on the curve is, is almost identical to the uh, tiles on the floor. It has a real nice look. To me, three-piece curb uh, or three-piece cap curb is ideal. Uh, here in California, I wouldn't lay a single piece. I know they have them in 60 inches. This is actually six, almost 62 inches, so I didn't have that opportunity. But uh, I do my curbs first, and then obviously I run my wall tiles over the top. Um, but I like three pieces. I like the fact that I only got two grout joints uh, down the cap of my curb. The inside turned out really nice. Um, <clears throat> nice and straight and uh, nicely cleanly grouted uh, with 316 scrap joints and then obviously these stones came on a, uh, the floor stones rather came with uh, a 12 by 12 uh, mat so all those joints are uh, eighth of an inch <clears throat> and all got like I said that all got grouted in by uh, with a non sanded grout now here is uh, uh, 12 to 24 well not quite 12 by 24. Porcelain tile comes pretty much 11 and 5 eighths or whatever, 11 and 3 quarter by 23 and something. Um, got a great deal on this uh, porcelain, um, but there was no bonos that came with it, so I bought these chair rail pieces that are in travertine, and you notice they match up really, really nice. There's some darker pieces up top here that I'm going to run, uh, but as I come down both sides of the wall, I'm going to uh, stick with the more lighter pieces that I was able to pick out from my supplier. Um, I went with that bolos because uh, this stuff didn't come and I, I couldn't find the bolos for it. Um, this 12 by 24 porcelain happened to be only a buck 39 a tile. No, I'm sorry, a buck 39 a square foot. So I saved a lot of money. Um, this is my house, so, and it's a guest house, so I don't want to go overkill, but you know, I want to do a nice job. Um, but oftentimes when you pick porcelain, you're, you're going to have trouble sometimes, not all the time, sometimes finding the bolos for it, especially when they're running such a good deal. So <clears throat> um, regarding the bolos, uh, let's talk quickly about this. Look how that bolos uh, or that chair rail uh, bleeds or, or falls back underneath that big tile. 
Now, a lot of you are going to say, wow, you know, that's going to crack right there. Well, it could, uh, but I was able to use that, uh, use my saw and manipulate it and get a nice uh, cut out of that tile. It's all in piece. And um, notice how the, the chair rail, though, goes all the way back to the wall. And then this big piece that goes over the top of it, uh, that's how the vo void was created. And I was able to get my grout in there. So that's really important. Never, if, uh, you know, I would never run a bowl or a chair rail like that and dye it straight onto the flat surface of a tile. You never want to grout. Uh, a joint that, that's where uh, your one tile intersects onto another tile in this in this predicament here. Um, see how I set this up? So my piece for that overlap is already pre-cut and I uh, traced it out there. So I'm ready to go with this wall and, uh, and I'll probably do that next. But um, <clears throat> let's talk about why I grouted this, this wall before I went on to these two walls for a couple of reasons. Notice, uh, you can say, wow, man, those, those grout joints on the side there are huge. Well, my tile is going to cover that. My tile is going to be as thick as my fingers and it'll cover that, that joint. I obviously do that and I got a little sloppy in some of them. I don't care because, again, my tile is going to cover that void. <clears throat> I do that because I don't want to leave a void when I grout this side. When I grout this side, I don't want, when I push my grout flow into that seam, I don't want to have a void here. I want that grout just to go on the face of this wall. Does that make sense? It just uh, creates a better backing for your grout. And obviously, you do it on the floor first, grout that before you do the wall. So it's kind of the same purpose. Uh, my tile drops onto my floor. Um, if I were to critique a little bit, I got... Kind of a big grog going there off of that tile. Uh, but, um, you know, that happens a little bit. Always check your, your mud base before you lay your tile. But for the most part, it's nice and level. My layout is such that uh, um, I didn't really have to cut that bottom row. And I ended up, I, I laid it out so that it would be shy two inches to fit that chair rail in. Now, I didn't grout that joint up there on the top of that chair rail. That's going to get caulked with a sanded caulking that matches the grout. Uh, that stuff's pretty good. Uh, it looks good and it, and it acts really well. It's mostly latex. I don't think there's any silicone in it. I stay away from silicone uh, uh, because of adhesion issues. But until I, uh, I won't um, put that caulking up in that seam until I seal those stones. Uh, that will happen when I seal all the grout joints. And we're going to talk about sealers later. Um, let's quickly talk about the drain before we move on here. Um, look how nice this drain turned out. Um, notice that there's just a slight little drop off, which is what you want. Uh, see the lippage there? Uh, that's not a mistake. That's just how I do it. Uh, obviously, look at the uh, layout. That's why I like the drain. Now it laid out perfect within those, um, those tiles there. But I want to show you something. Look how easy that thing is to take off. Now look at the, the grouting. This is very rigid plastic and there was a nice void created by this uh, drain system to the tile and I was able to grout that real nice. So this piece just drops on top. Remember I talked about the hair thing too, uh, which is nice. Uh, this thing just drops on top and you don't have to worry about it. If uh, this thing gets damaged, you just replace it and it's just gravity holding it on there. I mean, no one's going to lift it up. Uh, they, it comes with this nice little tool, so you just use that and take it right out. Um, I want to come back to the drain situation a little bit. Um, people are probably going to say, well, dude, you should have probably went with two-inch drain. It's not going to drain too good. Well, BS. Uh, this is my house. Uh, I, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, if I argue with myself here, two-inch drain would have been a little bit better. But if you remember, off of this wall here, um, my ventilation pipe was two inch, but it tiered down to an inch and a half. Um, why? I don't know why they did that. And then the inch and a half line went over to feed the, um, uh, the sink area here. So, and there's no clean out on the other side. 
there is there was a P trap if you remember, and my run from the drain to the P trap was only about 28 inches. I measured it. That's not that bad, and it had slope. I dropped my garden hose down there, uh, which is probably at 100 over 100 psi. It's not got a lot of pressure in my backyard because uh, it's off a separate uh, line uh, dedicated for just irrigation. Anyway, uh, I turned it on full blast. It drained perfectly. Um, the cool thing about uh, the other side of this wall uh, and on the other side of that three or four foot walkway beyond this wall is a four inch clean out. So I'm not gonna get any backup here. Um, I'll prevent backup with this nice little hair thing. Um, I think these things are really cool. Um, it's so easy to take off the hood via the cover and you know clean that out and that'll prevent a lot of backups in the future. So that's that. Uh, I'll take that off and put my, my temp cap over it. But that's how the drain turned out. I, I like those drains. I'm impressed with them. I think they work out really good. So now it's on to the two walls, uh, both sides. We'll start with this wall first. I'm going to take that chair rail around this niche and that'll, that'll be my uh, framing. Um, the face of the niche is going to be in this marble um, uh, three by or two by two by four inch. I think it's two by four inch. Um, it, it's set up like this. It's got like a masonry pattern just like this, and it's really nice, nice color. And um, we'll we'll get back to you when we see that whole wall all done, and then you can see how everything's going to turn out. And I think it's going to be uh, really nice once it gets all done, especially when I run that chair rail. Uh, across this wall just below the window over the sink uh, with this color that I chill it's going to be really nice. So <clears throat> I'll get busy and I'll finish tiling out, uh, well I'll tile out this wall next and then uh, you'll see uh, what my procedure is for that. Okay.